I'm in. I'm part of the Hooniversals. Hey there! Forgive the quarantine buzz cut. I don't usually look like this. I usually more closely resemble this sexy fellow. I'm Will Maddox, Will Maddox, and I am the newest member of the Hooniversals. I already have a pre-established channel, Maddox Productions 1, where I make some fun and crazy animations, some Doctor Who opinion think pieces, and some other content here and there. I'm also pretty active on Twitter at Your Boy Maddox, where I showcase my more cursed and depraved side. But yes, I am fairly active in the Doctor Who community, mostly for my flippant memory, but also for some controversial hot takes here and there. And I've been on pretty good internet friendly terms with Matt, Jean Luc. Is there a Thomas? I think there's a Thomas. Ollie, no, Ollie left, didn't he? God, I swear, is there, a, is there a Nick? I think there's a Nick. I've been on pretty good internet friendly terms with the Hooniversals for a while now. And with my relatively recent jump into Doctor Who opinion think pieces, they've been wanting my participation on their channel for a while now. Not only for my boundless talents and, uh, dashing charisma, but also they've been wanting a member who will give more representation to 60s Who on this channel, and I can provide just that because I love 60s Who. But more on that later, I'm first going to delve into my history with Doctor Who, so so you and I can build up some of that juicy relatability that, that you all know, like from YouTubers. You know? My memory is a little hazy, but I am almost certain that I wasn't there from day one of the revival. My earliest memory of Doctor Who... I think I was about seven? I was in the living room playing with uh, Thomas the Tank Engine trains. Yeah, I was still playing with Thomas the Tank Engine when I was seven years old. What of it? And the TV was on in the background, and I don't think it was the episode itself. I think it was like another program showcasing like a preview from the episode to come, or like showcasing, like, here's what happened in this latest episode, I don't know. Um, but uh, it was two scenes from Rise of the Cybermen. The first was the earpod scene where everyone stops in the middle of the street and the Doctor and Rose are like really confused and like the Tenth Doctor sticks his face in someone's ear going, It's the earpieces! Cyber industry down like right into their heads! Oh, that is clever! Or something to that effect. And the other scene was the cliffhanger scene where, uh, you know, We surrender! We surrender! We are inferior. And we'll be reborn. You know, that scene. Now, this wasn't what hooked me on the show. It was just my earliest memory. I think childhood me was just like, oh, cool, whatever, that looked weird. But then I visited extended family around the same time and, like, we were having an Indian takeaway and we needed something to watch, so... There was just, I think it it was, e it was either a repeat or like a DVD of Rose, and we watched that over an Indian takeaway and uh, as soon as that bin ate Mickey, uh, I'm pretty sure I was hooked for life. From then on I saw like a few scattered episodes from series 1 and 2, I never saw the whole two series at the time. There were some episodes that I didn't watch, like The Empty Child, because they were too scary! And, you know, I my childhood self was way too sheltered to cope with that. <laughs> but series three was the first of the revival that I was certainly there for as it broadcast, so I got to bear witness to many iconic moments like show to I am a human darling to don't blink. Don't even Don't blink. Even blink. blink, blink, and, and you're, you're dead. dead. Although, funnily enough, I wasn't allowed to watch the Shakespeare Code because of that aforementioned too scary rule. Although my family still let me watch Blink. You know, priorities there. But, around this same time, I was also starting to delve into Classic Who. You see, my dad sold, well, still does sell, second-hand home media. And around this time, it would have been like 2007-ish, um, he very kindly 
just let me have a few classic Who stories on VHS, even though, what, 2007? VHS was a long dead medium by this point. I think I was definitely aware of the classic series by this point because of the internet and also like school reunion, so it wasn't too hard of a pill to swallow and, you know, when you're a kid you don't really care so much about, you know, stupid special effects. It's more like, wow, it's Doctor Who, I want more of it! But yeah, my dad gave me a few classic Who stories on VHS. Um, Revenge of the Cybermen, Tomb of the Cybermen, Day of the Daleks, uh, Pyramids of Mars, The Robots of Death, classics. Okay, not revenge, but you know. Because if they had such a but my first, the very first classic Who story I ever saw was Resurrection of the Daleks. One of my favourites, and it holds a very special place in my heart. And it actually played a vital role in strengthening my fandom, because around this same time, like, Time Crash was coming out, the Children in Need special where Peter Davison met David Tennant, and it was great because, you know, having just watched Resurrection of the Daleks and then seeing that, I got to go, OH MY GOD I KNOW WHO THAT IS! And then next year when the trailers for Series 4 were coming out and they were teasing the return of Davros, I got to go, OH MY GOD I KNOW WHO THAT IS! And that was such a special moment for my childhood self and that propelled Peter Davison into becoming my favourite Doctor. For a time, he has since plummeted right now. Yeah, let's get into my actual current preferences for Doctor Who. For those jumping on from my pre-existing channel, you know my deal already. But for those unfamiliar with me, I am a huge fanboy of 60s and 70s classic Who. The first four Doctors are my favourite period of the entire show. Fantastic Doctors, brilliant companions, and just an endless sea of just great great stories. Like, relatively few duds. Gem after gem after gem after gem after gem. Just Mwah. But the absolute pinnacle for me is Patrick Troughton's run as the second Doctor. It is just... divine. Season 4 is obviously finding its feet, but it's still phenomenal. Season 5 is my favourite Doctor Who season of all time. I just utterly adore it. And Season 6 is pretty damn brilliant as well. So uh, yeah, you can see where my loyalties lie, uh, and you can expect a lot of Second Doctor videos from me. I can just endlessly gush about Power of the Daleks, the Macra Terra, Tomb of the Cybermen, the Enemy of the World, the Invasion, the War Games, until the cows come home. So uh, yeah, look forward to that. 80s who I can get down with as well, but it is just a bit too... 80s for my tastes, if that makes any sense. It does. It really does. Come on. That said, I am also very keen on the Russell T Davies era. Like, not only was it my gateway to the show, but it's also just this really uplifting, familial vibe to it. It's just, I can just sit down and, you know, it's, I just feel good. As for everything past Russell T Davies... Not a fan, but there are some bright spots. I am pretty well versed in expanded media as well, like I'm, I have a lot of experience with Big Finish and DWM comics and some uh, of the revival era BBC books, but um, I kind of go in and out of favour with the expanded universe right now, I'm just like whatever to it, but other times I am like really invested in it, but you know. For now I'll just give them a thumbs up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was my introduction. Um, I, I hope you like me. Now, be gone. The video is over now. Bye-bye.